Hello there guys, it's Steven here, back with another video. I know I promised a video every day for a month, but the flu got me, it just beat me guys. I uh, I was ill, I was in bed, feeling sorry for myself, nose dripping with snot, I know it was being a horrible a image. Bitch. Being a little bitch, according to Nicola over there. And mainly playing Assassin's Creed Orange, it's a very good game by the way, but yeah, I, I, I failed for three days, I was really ill, sorry guys. I, I tried, but it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't working, just trust me on that. Anyway! Hello, how are you all doing? I hope you're all good. There's been lots happening since I last did a video, so we're going to discuss lots of talking points today, lots of transfer news, and a few little tidbits of information. First of all, I've got to give a shout out to the Patreons. You've taken me over the $200 mark. Guys, that's uh, that's an unbelievable amount of support. It makes these videos every day that I try and do, well, try and do every day anyway, at least. It makes it worthwhile. It feels like when I'm putting the spare time into something, it feels like it's actually going somewhere. So thank you very much, you're absolute heroes. And the shout outs for today's videos are Will Brooks, Steve Martin. Is it the actual Steve Martin? Uh, hopefully, uh, Clavenhorn, Juan C. Barrios, and Wayne Oski. Guys, thanks very much for getting involved. You're absolute heroes. If you want to get involved, go to patreon.com forward slash esteemed company. Loads of tears there for loads of different kind of rewards and so on. A little birthday shout out as well for a certain Mr. Joseph Guardiola. You may have heard him, he's 47 years old today. Happy birthday, Mr. Guardiola. And also, uh, Nicholas Otamendi has signed a new contract, which is obviously excellent news. The general, as he likes to be called, and all that. Um, he's been excellent this season, he's been fantastic. And I absolute turnaround for a player that was in general pretty unreliable. Uh, he was a, a weird defender, Otamendi, a, a bit of a meme, we're being honest. One minute excellent, next minute on his arse and he's back after some ridiculous lunging challenge. But he's been fantastic. And obviously, he deserves this new contract. He's improved exponentially. According to people close to Guardiola, it's the biggest improvement they've seen in a player uh, under Guardiola's coaching methods, which says it all how good he's actually been at City so far this season. And a little shout out as well to Angus Gunn last night who played against Chelsea in the FA Cup. He was absolutely excellent. A lot of people were saying to me on Twitter, should he be back next season as a number two? Um, I would very much like that. I don't suspect that personally. I think he'll want to carry on playing first team football. But if Angus Gunn wants to come back and take over from Bravo for a season or two, maybe win a trophy, they wouldn't be bad necessarily for him either but he's a fantastic keeper going right to the very top not sure they make it a city simply because we have Edison who could easily be the best goalkeeper in the world one day that's not to say Angus Gunn isn't good he just might have a, a monumental task trying to displace such a monumental keeper in Edison but Angus Gunn fantastic player and another proving what a lot of people have said these kids that we've got from two or three years back they're very good players you just got to be patient with them also as well I can't do a video today without touching on Alexis Sanchez he looks likely that she has well and truly sailed. Um, my thoughts on it, it is what it is. I did want Sanchez at Manchester City. I am gutted to see him in a red shirt potentially because he's a quality player. Does he single-handedly close the gap between the two clubs? No, of course he doesn't. Is he an excellent player? Does he improve them? Yes, he does, unfortunately. Is the money absolutely crazy if it's true? Yes, it is. And you can look back from my previous videos. If I said if it's £400,000, I wouldn't go near that personally. It's an absolutely ridiculous amount of money. I did want us to sign him, but I can totally understand and why we're not doing it for that amount of money. I'm not going to sit here and preach though. As City fans, we've spent a lot of money, well our team has, so we can't really get on a moral high ground. There's no really room for that. You can really smile if you want to, and it probably is a bit ridiculous, but I'm not going to judge teams too much given what we've spent in the past. Personally though, I understand why we're not willing to smash our wage structure for a man approaching 30. It just seems a little bit excessive, we're being totally honest. And there's a new name for the transfer target today, Jean-Michael Serry, the 26-year-old Ivory Coast international, currently playing his trade in the French top division for Nice. Mario Bell Latelli's team nonetheless. It would be nice to have one of his friends in Manchester City, wouldn't it? Anyway, City are apparently in for him. He was meant to be moving to Barcelona in the summer, but that transfer collapsed last minute, leaving the player devastated. I can sure you would be devastated not going to Barcelona. But anyway, he's still available. He's still single and on the market. And apparently Guardiola wants a piece of uh, Seri's action or something like that. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. Anyway, he's a very intelligent footballer. More of an attacking midfielder than some would probably say would be suitable for the Fernandinho replacement. A bit like Fred in that way. More of an attacker than a defender. But he's a very good footballer. Very hardworking, very humble. He's got great technical ability, as would be a requisite for any Guardiola midfielder. Now, it depends whether he wants to come to Manchester City if he's been that close to move to Barcelona. Now, obviously, we're a very attractive proposition given the fact we have the manager who's probably the best with midfielders in the world. Though, I am not sure once you've had your head turned that way if it could happen and basically what I'm trying to say is I'm setting myself up not to be disappointed if it doesn't happen but we are linked to him but he's seen as the backup apparently to Fred which I'll get on 
to in a minute. Now, apparently City are saying to either him or Fred, whoever we do sign, they want to deal, do a deal with their clubs in January and then confirm it, but only get him in the summer. I mean, I'd rather just sign him now. We're going to sign a midfielder personally, but as long as we actually confirm the, the deal, put on signature on the dotted line, make sure it's actually confirmed, then I don't really mind if we have to wait until summer. What I don't want, given the Alves and Sanchez bollocks, is the whole, yeah, yeah, we got your word for it, and then it's just not happening. But too many setbacks for that to be reliable going forward. He would be a great fit for the Premier League though. He's got absolutely bucketfuls of stamina. Obviously, he's a pretty experienced now at 26 years old. He'd be able to hit the ground running in theory. And in general, players from the French League tend to settle in, in quite well over here. Uh, so fingers crossed there's something in this because he's a very good player. There's also been plenty of rumours about Johnny Evans over the past few days. Uh, as people who follow me on Twitter will know, I'm not really a Johnny Evans fan. I think he's a bit shit, even being honest. Well, I'm being a bit harsh there. It's all relative to the level. Johnny Evans is obviously a competent footballer. He's obviously a decent defender. My main bugbear with the Evans thing is I think when you sign a player to be a backup, it tends to usually end in tears. I think in general, for their level to be maintained, and they're about a 6 or 7 out of 10 usually when they're a backup, they have to have regular football, as anyone does. And if you don't get regular football, you're 6 or 7. 7 out of 10 usual level well it drops to a 5 or 4 and that ends up being uh, well it ends up making the team worse in general I think that's my problem when you've got someone like David Silva if he didn't play regularly his 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 level would drop to a 7 8 and he'd still be excellent whereas a backup player well it's fundamentally flawed concept because it means these backup players don't get games and they're just not as good as they were when you got them then at their average level so that's my biggest bugbear I'd rather always try and sign a player with potential promise and hunger to maybe uh, uh, this is why I like young players, the young players who promise as the backup players, because they're a lot more eager to kind of get involved. Whereas someone like Johnny Evans, he could just go for the motions. He's also not particularly strong, not particularly fast. Uh, and he was also let go by United a few years back. Now, also West Brom haven't been playing passing football for a very long time. Uh, they don't really do that on the Pulis, do they? Let's be honest. Uh, and Evans doesn't really tick that many boxes for me now what I will say is obviously he does have experience and he's won things before so he knows that side of the game and there aren't that many options going around personally I would rather just get through to the summer and size one better but I do trust Guardiola and Guardiola has earned the right to uh, have free pass to some mad tiring like Johnny Evans he's not infallible he's made mistakes before looking at you Mr Nolito Mr Bravo but Pep is a genius and if you want him I'll have to trust him on that fingers crossed if this signing does happen that Evans will prove me and a lot of City fans wrong. And there's been a little bit of an update on the Fred transfer. Apparently City were told it cost them in excess of £45 million pounds, and that was more than they were willing to go to. Fred, another potential replacement for Fernandinho. I've made a big video on him before. Uh, go and look at that. It'll be a link here in the description somewhere. Uh, but Fred is a very good player. I would like him at Manchester City a lot. Now the rumours are like the Serie deal that if we do sign him, it won't be until the summer but we could confirm it in January. I just hope we get it done because I think he's an excellent little player. No more updates other than that really but he's someone I'd very much like to see in a Manchester City shirt. Hopefully, they'll find some compromise on the price there. And there's been some outgoing information. Larry Coyote, a guy who's not actually at City, he's at Girona on loan. He apparently is going to Amiens in the French League after having a relatively indifferent spell over at Girona. He was meant to be pretty good when he was playing over in Austria, scored quite a few goals, and it's not quite worked out for him. I suspect that City will sell him probably for a profit pretty easily. So, one of those players that comes in and disappears pretty much before you know it. And Kean Bryan as well, after a very successful first half of the season loan at Oldham, he's gone back on loan again to Oldham for the second half of the season. I really like Kean Bryan. I think he's the kind of player that will give him a few years time and if he doesn't do it at City he'll work his way up back to the Premier League and maybe even to the England squad by the time he's in the mid-20s he's a very likeable player a very tough little kind of leader of a midfielder that could play in defence so actually he's been playing centre-back for Oldham he's just a very good footballer and a very tough hard-working lad uh, in general a very likeable player and I'm almost certain he's starting to really come into his own now at Oldham he was, uh, he's been man of the match a few times with them a few bigger clubs were looking at him in the League 1 as well one's going for promotion but he's decided to stay there and get a bit more experience which is probably a very decent decision on his behalf because you know that guaranteed game time until now and then reassessing the summer is probably what he needs but Kian an excellent player and another young player doing very well Burst and Selina scored a few wonder goals at Ipswich this so far this season he scored another the other day as well where he jinked past someone and put it in the top corner from 30 yards something he's very capable of now apparently lots of Europe's mid-level clubs are after him Werder Bremen being one of them Espanyol uh, Napoli I think it was it Napoli or Lazio someone like that someone will correct me in the comments but a 
a lot of clubs like that have been after Selina. And Selina is the kind of player that will go to top again. I'm almost certain he will find his way to a very high level in the game. I'm not sure if he'll reach a City or Barcelona kind of level, but he'll definitely reach a lower mid-tier Champions League kind of level, at least. You know, your teams like your Schalke, maybe even a Dortmund, the ones just below the pinnacle, at very least. He's a fantastic player, showing how special he is, and his attitude is fantastic. Selina, if he does leave... He'll go very far. I'm hoping he just stays around and has another level, uh, another loan at another level. And maybe, maybe in a year or two from now, he might come back to the City's first team. Who knows? Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Get in the comments. And all those people supporting the page, you're absolute heroes. And I will see you next time. Hello there guys, it's Steven here. Thanks for watching yet another Esteem Company video. I want to say a big huge thank you to everyone who's been involved in the Patreon over the last few days. There's been absolutely loads of pledges coming in and it's been a little bit mind-blowing and it's made me feel a lot better when I've been very ill. So thanks very much for all your support. If you want to get involved, head over to patreon.com forward slash Esteem Company for all the potential tiers and all the rewards that are there. But anyway guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for getting involved and I will see you next time.